Hit Film Sensei here. Today in this video, we are going to rig an X-Wing fighter from beginning to end, totally from scratch. All right, the first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to find an X-Wing fighter model that we can actually rig up from scratch. And you're in luck because Andrew Kramer with Video Copilot, the one and only most awesome Andrew Kramer, on May 4th of 2016, posted this on his blog. It was a free Star Wars model pack. And if you come down the list, and I'm going to leave a link of this in the description below. If you come down here a little bit lower, you will find that included models in this free Star Wars model pack is a TIE Fighter, uh, some Imperial Corridor pieces, Luke's lightsaber, Obi-Wan's lightsaber, Darth Vader's lightsaber, the R2 unit, the BB unit, and the X-Wing. Also, the Dantooine Moisture Evaporator. Uh, and if you... Uh, are very carefully looking at one of my videos going down the 32nd uh, short film. Uh, you will see that I use the Dantooine moisture evaporator as the sky elevator. Ah, looks like we're getting ready to leave. I'll see you in a week. But here it is. You got the TIE Fighter, you got the BB-8, you got the Sabres, and you have, look at that. What a beautiful um, X-Wing model that, that he has there. If you would like to download it, you click on this for the download the model pack. However, it is 417 megabytes, and it's in a zip file that unpacks to 1,386 megabytes. Also, you will want to download the JPEG map files directly below it. And that is 169 megabytes, which unpacks to 180. So that's a total of 586 megabytes that unpack to over one and a half gigabytes worth of stuff. So make sure you're ready to do that. And then when you are, we go into HitFilm Pro 2017 and we start working. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this little arrow next to the import button and say I want to import a 3D model and I'm going to hunt down the X-Wing, X-Fighter OBJ. I'm going to open that up, and I'm going to take a look at it. Wow, that's such a beautiful model. Okay. Now, in this model is included several groups, the body, the windows, and each of the four wings. And I am going to need each one of those groups, so I am going to check on all of them just like that. And then under materials, there's only one, and you open it up, and you want to import the diffuse map so you will click on this find the folder that has it and x-wing diffuse map and as you can see that's really really nice under the specular map we will bring in the x-wing specular text or jpeg i mean under the normal map we'll bring in the x-wing normal uh, jpeg and under the bump map we will use the reflection map okay and it is unbelievably beautiful. What we're going to do is we're going to flip this from Fong to Cook Torrance. And I'm just going to leave everything else the same and click OK. All right. So let's start by making a new composite shot. Let's make it fairly quick. How about about uh, five seconds? Click OK. And I'm just going to drag my X-Wing fighter into the composite shot. And there it is. You can see it. The first thing I want to do is I want to create a camera layer and then I want to create a new point layer which I am going to rename by hitting my F2 key X wing master control point okay and then and of course I have to be able to spell under the X wing fighter itself I notice that it is a two dimensional model what I want to do oh I misspelled that let's go back here and fix this thank you very much okay 
I'm going to make the control point model a 3D point. And then the X-Wing fighter, I'm going to leave as a two-dimensional model. And instead, under the models X-Fighter, I'm going to transform the body to that point and also the windows to that point. You say, well, what about the wings? So the wings are going to transform to different points because they're going to be able to open and close. So now you will see if I were to rotate that around that the wings and the body are moving together, right? If I go to a perspective view and I just kind of give you a good look here, you can see that that is moving, okay? All right, now, here's the thing about the wings. I could create a point for each one of these wings, but the reality is, is all the wings either move together opening or move together closing, right? So I want to kind of slimline this. If they were into, operated independently, then I would put a point on each one separately, okay? But since they all move at the same time, I'm going to, um, you know, make this as simple as possible. So what I want to do is, is I'm going to create a new point layer and I'm going to make it three dimensional and I am going to call this point LB, which stands for left bottom wing and RT, which stands for right top wing. Okay. And then I'm going to create a new point layer and again, it's going to be a three-dimensional plane. And I am going to call that one RB, right bottom, and LT, left top, wing. Okay. So now I have these two points that control all four wings. And if I were to go into these, I would assign the right top wing to the right top top wing point. I'm going to assign the right bottom wing to the right bottom wing point, the left bottom to the left bottom point, and the left top to the left top wing point. Okay. Now, if I were to rotate, if I open up one of the wings and I were to rotate the Z position, then you can see that that would open that up. And if I were to rotate the Z position on the other one, then it would open up that point. Okay, see how that works? But I would have to animate both of those at the same time. I would have to like go in and if I wanted to change them, then I would have to go in and change them both. So I said to myself, man, there's got to be a way to have one control that you could basically work all four of those wings on. And after thinking about this for a long time, I finally figured it out. So here's what you do. And this is somewhat complicated. So if you get lost, I, I can appreciate that. And you can always just work the Z rotation on these two points for sure. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to create a new point layer. Okay. And I'm going to make it into a three-dimensional point. And I am going to call it the wing control point okay and it will actually be on the right hand side okay and then i'm going to create another point layer and it will be the secondary wing control point and it's on the left hand side okay the secondary wing is going to be uh, down here, and then the wing control will be right underneath the wing X-Wing Master. The secondary wing control is actually going to be a three-dimensional point, and it will be on the left-hand side. And then the master control will be on the uh, right-hand side, which is right here, about 100 pixels to the left and right, okay? So there they both are, and they're gonna control those wings. Now watch how this is gonna happen. The secondary wing control, I'm going to actually parent to the master wing control point, which is the right one. And the right one, of course, I want to uh, parent to the X-wing master control point, so whenever I move the X-wing master control point around, it will move everywhere, right? And everything will be in sync, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is, is I'm just going to be able to have the ability to move that X-Wing or that wing control point up and down, and I'm going to align the wings to those points so that when the point moves, then the, the wings move also. 
So the way that I'm going to do this, I'm going to use my left bottom right top wing point, and I am going to align it specifically to the master control point. So under controls, under layer alignment, I'm going to say to a layer, and the layer that I'm going to use is the wing control point. Now the problem here is, is that the blue arrow is going to point towards that arrow, and when that happens, it turns the whole thing that way. But you can see that if I actually move the position of that, it will actually adjust those wings. The problem is, of course, they're in the wrong place. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to open up the transform properties and just rotate this on its Y axis, negative 90 degrees to put it back where it is. So now you can see that if I move that, it will actually control the opening and closing of the wings. Okay. Now the other wing will point towards the other slider control point. So again, in the control section alignment towards a layer and the alignment layer will be the secondary wing control and notice that it spins it around pointing the blue arrow at it. I don't want that. So on the Y rotation, I'm going to rotate it back around 90 degrees so that it's back where it belongs. And now under, if I just work the wing control point itself and I just move the position, you can see that it open and closes those wings, which is really pretty cool. Now, if I go to say the back view of this, then you can see, and I just sort of grab this one and all of the points themselves, okay? And I show you here, look, they all are working in coordination with each other. See how that works? Okay, and how far should I move that? I would say, you know, maybe about that far, maybe 40, 40 points. Oh, zero would be closed. Okay, so zero is closed, and I'm going to say 40 p pixels up is open. Okay, so we'll either go zero or 40. Okay, and all I have to do is just keyframe this position point when I want to. Okay, all right, so now that I've done that, let's go ahead and close them for a second. Now that I have actually done that, I, got, I just want to double check and make sure that everything is connected to the master control point. So... If I open it up and I just start sliding this, oh, look, see, and there's a problem, right? So what do I do? I need to go in and figure out what happened, right? And what happened was, was that even though I have my wings um, attached, they're not actually parented. They're only aligned, okay? So what I need to do is I'll go ahead and align those to the master control point. So now... If I move it, it will work just great. But anywhere that it's at, if I open up the slider on that, it will always open up. Okay. If I were to, for example, under the you know master wing control, if I were to rotate, uh, you know everything and turn it and adjust it, but then I still go ahead and work the wing slider guess what? It will always work. It doesn't matter which direction that thing is pointing. Okay. So that's pretty, that's pretty cool. Really? Okay. I mean, that's, that's what we want. All right. So now all we have to do is put some engine glows in them, right? Okay. So what I want to do is, is I'm going to go back to media. I'm going to import another model and the model I'm going to import is a cylinder model. Okay. And I just made this cylinder model in um, blender. And if, uh, you want a copy of this, you want, I'd be happy to just send it to me at hitfilmsensei at gmail.com. And I would be delighted to send you this, right? Just send me a quick e email. The one thing I want to do is, is I just want to change the color of this to be pure white like that. And we'll just go ahead and bring it in. Okay. And what I want to do is, is I want to drag this in above the fighter model. Ooh, it's quite a big cylinder, isn't it? Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to under model cylinder transform. I'm going to really scale this down to about 5%. Nice and small. So now you can see where it is. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and look at this from the back and you can see it. The first thing that you'll notice we need to do is rotate it on its X axis. So we're going to rotate it 90 degrees. Okay. And then we're just going to position it here in this, um, 
engine well. So I'm going to just slide it over and I'm going to slide it up. I'm going to zoom in here nice and close and you're going to see that it's still a little bit big. So maybe 4%. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, about here and about there, roughly, right? Yeah, I would say that's pretty close. Okay, All right now here is the deal, and this is sort of you know easy to understand, right? That is cylinder, and that I'm just going to relabel that left top engine, right? Okay. Uh, what I want to do is, is I want to right click on that and duplicate it. So these cylinders are the engines. Okay. And I did this um, a couple of weeks ago and I'm going to call this one left bottom engine. Okay. Left bottom engine. And this is a perfectly symmetrical model. So in theory, if I were to just come in here and and find that position point and make it a negative number, it would end up being right there on the bottom engine, right? Which is really amazing, right? Now, if I take the left top engine and I duplicate it and I call this uh, left or sorry, right top engine, uh, then again, I could do the same thing here. All I have to do is just change the uh, sign and it should sit right there on that one. And then last but not least, if I were to take the left bottom engine and duplicate that and call this one right bottom engine. And again, if I were to just simply transform the X axis sign to a negative, there it is. OK, so now we're good to go, except that if you look at this from the top, you can see that those engines are actually sitting up here. They're not back where the engine should be. So what I want, want to do is, is I want to grab all four of these engines using my shift key, and I'm just going to drag them all back to roughly being inside the, the well of the, um, you know, of the uh, X-Wing, okay? Now, if I go back to the active camera, the camera is currently in the front okay and what i want to do is i actually want to move the camera into behind it so that i can actually see what it's doing so i'm just going to move this to about negative 2000 pixels behind the camera and i am going to rotate it around 180 degrees so i can see the back you see so now i'm looking at the back of the model here and i might actually move in a little bit closer okay now like i talked about a couple of weeks ago the key to putting the engines on here is under the controls of the engines, under layer properties, what I want to do is I want to make sure include in depth map is actually checked and the depth source layer is set to the X-Wing. And so there it is. Now what I want to do is I want to take my engines, all of them, and I just want to push them back in Z space until they're sitting inside the well about like that what do you think does that look pretty good i think that looks pretty good so they're sitting fairly far back in there uh and they're sort of exposing the uh you know the the metal around the engine okay um now what i want to do is um i want to uh, remove the illumination from that because i certainly don't want that uh to be um you know a problem and then I am going to add the auto light flares effect to that engine's model. Okay, if I twirl that open, uh, hotspot generation, max flares, I just want to up that to the maximum for everything. Okay, and under hotspot, I want to change the color to something like orange. Okay, and why am I changing that to orange? Well, because Andrew Kramer's is uh orange also see look at that that's an those are orange for sure so i'm gonna leave those as orange that's what i want okay and i think that looks really pretty slick okay so now um the neat thing about this is is that all i have to do is under each of these models okay is just transform from their particular point so the left top needs to transform from the left top, okay? The right top needs to transform from the right top point. The left bottom needs to transform from the left bottom point. And then the right bottom needs to transform from the 
right bottom point, okay? And that way, if I do work the wing control, this is the master control slider for the wing, then the engines will move with them as well. So they can go to 40, right? And it looks really good, okay? So now I have completely rigged this thing up and it looks fantastic, it really does. So what we're gonna do now is just create a little scene for this uh, X-Wing to fly around in uh, and then we'll wrap it up. So let me take my camera and I'm gonna put it back uh, I'm only, in fact, I'm going to put it at zero here, but I'm going to put it at, um, say, 300 off, okay? Uh, and just to make my life easy, under the layer properties, I'm going to say align towards a layer, and the layer will be the X-Wing master control point, okay? So that way, it will be looking directly at it. Of course, I have to zero out the Y rotation, and now we're looking directly at it. Um... I think we ought to go negative 300. We'll put it on the other side so it's there, okay? All right, now the X-Wing Master Control Point, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slide it back in space like that, okay? Let's slide it back about negative 5,000, okay? And let's go ahead and keyframe that position. And then we'll go to the end of our timeline, and let's make it, say, 5,000. So basically, it's just flying by, okay? So now if I just uh, play that, you can see it's flying by, okay? And I do think that I want those wings to open at some point, so I'm going to come to about right here. And the wing control slider point, I am going to keyframe the position. And I think if we move forward about, you know, half a second, and we make that 40, then the wings are now open. So now we have something that looks like uh, that. And maybe I don't want it. Maybe I want that to happen a little bit earlier. So I just grab those and I slide them. I don't have to actually, um, you know, have them go back in and change every single wing because they're all controlled with one point. See how that works? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay. Let's add a real quick background. So I'm going to add a new layer, a plain layer, and we'll just call this stars and we will move it to the bottom. And let's uh, add a fractal noise effect to it, dragging that in. And I'm going to open it up. Preset will be Starfield. Okay, then I will add a 360 degree video viewer layer only effect. And under that, I am going to set the scale to 20%. All right. So now I have a nice little stars background that actually moves with the camera as the camera is moving. All right. Now you may have noticed when you when I first started uh, that um, I had a Death Star sitting here. I'm going to drop this Death Star in and I'm going to make this into a 3D plane. And if I go back to looking at the top again and I scroll out using my mouse wheel, you can see there's the Death Star. And what I want to do is I want to back this up and I'm to create a huge amount of scale. I'm just going to back this all the way up to where it's almost off of the screen. OK, and the Death Star under the controls, I'm going to say align towards the active camera, whatever the active camera is. So now if I go back to the active camera, you can see the Death Star way, way over there. But actually, I think it would be really cool. If I scaled that up a bit to give it some really nice scale, maybe like that. Okay, and so now we have something that looks like this. The X-Wing flies and shoom, there it goes towards the Death Star. Now the only thing I have to do is light the scene. Before I light the scene, under the Death Star's material properties, I want to say don't illuminate, please. Um, and then I'm just going to come back here basically to the middle and I am just going to add a light like that and that's going to really immediately light. Look at the detail of that. Isn't that gorgeous? I mean that really is absolutely stunningly beautiful really. Wow. I mean what a lovely looking uh, model that Andrew Kramer has provided. I'm going to go and parent that to the X-Wing master control point. 
Uh, and so now I have this X-Wing flying through space towards the Death Star. Dum, dum, dum. Look at those engine glows are beautiful, right? The, um, the detail on this X-Wing is absolutely stunning, just magnificent. Uh, and, I mean, that's pretty cool. And all right away, in just uh, less than 20 minutes, I have created a fantastic-looking um, rigged-up um, X-Wing fighter. Now, if you want to save that fighter, I would highly recommend you save this composite shot. The way that you would do that is in the media panel. You would right-click on that and say, Save as, and then you can come back to it anytime that you want, and you have a fully rigged and ready to go uh, X Wing fighter. So, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks for watching. If you would like to keep up with the latest tutorial videos from Hit Film Sensei, consider liking the Hit Film Sensei Facebook page, following the Hit Film Sensei Twitter feed, and subscribing to the Hit Film Sensei YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. A new video comes out every Friday and Monday, and thanks for your support.